I remember Buck Showalter saying, Jim, yesterday that this shall pass. Well, the one thing that passed were a couple of balls that, you know, were needed for home runs today for the Orioles, including that grand slam by Mark Trumbo. Yeah, and, you know, as Rick was alluding to, it started to me, it started in the fourth inning. Uh, you know, Manny poked a ball into right field, had a great at bat. Uh, Chris Davis, a couple of hits again today, so back-to-back -back ball games. Ground ball up the middle, uh, stayed through it. Actually, the first time up, also had a good at bat, didn't get anything to show for it. And then, uh, you know, Trumbo would eventually hit the grand slam the, the inning next, but he just kind of stayed on didn't over swing you know I think it's something and when you know when you're leading the American League or tied for the league in home runs uh, it's nice to hit home runs I you know I had a few in my career I, I loved going around the bases but he had a great approach and then you know in the inning later he would work the count to three and one and kind of change the, the the direction of this game and meanwhile meanwhile Chris Tillman was winning his 15th game by really pitching consistent ball other than maybe pitching to the scoreboard the home run to Healy pitched uh, marvelously and then of course the bullpen which it usually doesn't do made the game close you know Jimmy as much as we always talk about the Orioles uh, the, uh, you know and not being able to take walks in ball games and getting themselves in bad hitting guys swinging at bad pitches they beat themselves today it seemed like the attitude changed a little bit they were a little bit more patient they didn't get beat they didn't beat themselves by swinging at a lot of bad pitches to about that third inning on so the offense really kind of picked itself up today. Well, he did a nice job of, uh, you know, Andrew Triggs is not a starter. So he was a reliever that uh, only gave up the one hit in the first three innings. And then second time through the order, it's a game of adjustment, as you know. Uh, you know, obviously, when, when you and I, I was pitching and you were catching, we knew that teams were going to look for s certain pitches. The Orioles did a nice job. They had some quality at bats. They hit the home runs. Uh, and, you know, that's what they're going to have to do when they go across the bay against San Francisco because, you know, Matt Cain had a hamstring problem. He's going to pitch tomorrow. He's won his last two starts they're going to get uh, Baumgartner who's as good as anybody in the you know in the National League tough lefty 220 ERA and then Cueto has been struggling lately but uh, he was what like 12 and 1 or something like that going to the All-Star game so you're going to have to have a discipline approach you're going to play National League baseball uh, and again you know the Orioles are they're they're more to what they did today offensively than we saw in the first three games but you got to give the A's a lot of credit uh, their first three pitchers two of them that really weren't even supposed to be part of the starting staff uh, pitched great they took advantage of the aggressiveness but today the Orioles they did what they usually do which is hit some home runs and usually hit multi run home runs and the grand slam by Trumbo certainly turned this game around. Jim, when you look back at the, when Chris Tillman left the ball game, he had a very comfortable lead. And as you mentioned, a lot of times you need six outs to end the game. The Orioles needed 71 pitches to record those six outs. How alarming was that from the bullpen? Well, I don't think it's alarming. I mean, I think, you know, Logan uh, Andruzic, uh, you know, he's been out of the league. He's pitching with a different ball. Uh, I don't really know if we know he can pitch at this level after really missing the last two years. Uh, but, you know, they signed him. Buck put him out there. Uh, he didn't do what he wanted to do. He didn't do what Buck Showalter wanted him to do. He didn't do what Dan Duquette wanted him to do. So, you know, again, the Orioles are always looking to improve the ball club. Uh, you know, O'Day had to come in in a game. And, you know, I'm not sure he's 100%. Uh, you know well from the hamstring problem it's a push off leg and obviously you didn't want to get to uh, to uh, you know Britain but you did and when he did he got his 35th save even though he made it awfully exciting in the night so you know again it's a game you, it, as Adam Jones we talked about in the opening uh, guys you, you move on you didn't want to lose the first three games you did win game four and now you got a tough weekend series so you just hope that you can build on that and of course, the, you know, the Giants, they, they're 11 games over 500 at home and they're a good ball club. Uh, they've won what, you know, every other year they win a world's championship. I don't know if that'll happen this year, but they're a formidable club that the Orioles are going to have to play top level baseball to beat them. So we'll see how that happens. Well, Jim, as we always appreciate your comments, we'll talk to you tomorrow night when the Orioles open up that series against the uh, San Francisco Giants baseball Hall of Famer there. Jim Palmer in Oakland.